The truncus arteriosus is this big structure that's present during fetal development. And later in development, it divides to form two separate arteries, the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Once it's fully developed, the aorta comes from the left ventricle, and the pulmonary artery comes from the right ventricle. A persistent truncus arteriosus is when this developmental structure doesn't divide off into two separate arteries. And so the baby's left with this one giant artery that branches off from both the right and the left ventricles, and then splits off into the aorta and pulmonary artery. Sometimes this condition is simply referred to as truncus arteriosus, or TA. The cause of this TA is unknown, although a lot of cases seem to be associated with 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome, also known as DeGeorge syndrome. So let's switch to a little more simplified view of the heart. Alright, so usually deoxygenated blood comes in from the body to the right atrium, where it goes to the right ventricle and is pumped through the pulmonary artery to the lungs to get reoxygenated. Then fresh oxygenated blood comes from the lungs to the left atrium, goes to the left ventricle and is pumped through the aorta to the body. And then that circuit repeats, right? If these two great arteries, the aorta and pulmonary artery, don't divide, you essentially have this massive artery coming from both ventricles. Notice though that this one big artery does split into the aorta and pulmonary artery. Even though they eventually split off, before that it's just one single vessel, so the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mix. When deoxygenated blood mixes into the systemic circulation, it'll often present as cyanosis, a bluish purple discoloration of the skin, which can be seen in the baby within the first days after birth. Before birth though, things actually work a little differently. So what happens is that deoxygenated blood gets sent to the mother, and then oxygenated blood comes from the mother. And since they're not using their lungs yet, the fetal heart uses a few tricks, like sending the blood through the foramen ovale. What's important about this though is that since the fetus doesn't use their lungs yet, there's relatively high vascular resistance and therefore high pressure in the pulmonary circulation. So even though there's this huge main blood vessel and mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, the fetus actually does pretty well since the pressures in the two circuits are relatively similar, meaning that both circulations get about the same amount of blood. After the baby's born though, the mother stops supplying blood, obviously. The foramen ovale typically closes, and the baby starts to rely on his or her own lungs. All of which leads to a decrease in vascular resistance and pressure in the pulmonary circuit, which is actually normal. That being said though, now there's this pressure differential between the left and the right side, where the left side's higher than the right side, which is also normal. What's not normal though, is that with TA the blood's still able to mix, right? So what ends up happening is that since the pressure's lower in the pulmonary circuit to the lungs, blood tends to shunt toward the lungs. So more blood volume goes to the lungs and less goes to the body. This extra blood volume on the right side leads to fluid overload. And with all this extra volume, the heart begins to fail. Babies with TA therefore quickly develop heart failure, potentially within weeks after birth. Due to the severity of complications with TA, newborn babies require surgical repair, with the main goal being to restore normal blood flow through the heart. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.